Welcome back to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I'm your host, Chris Brown. Uh, I don't know why I have to keep on saying my name in marketing school. They told me if you say your name enough, people will remember it. But I think with the name Chris Brown, people will remember it. Um, I am launching a new part, a series that we're going to try in 2022 here. And this is coming out the last Friday of each month. Uh, and it is about politics around the globe. We have guests coming in from Australia, from New Zealand, from the States, from Mexico, from Nicaragua. But today we're, we're looking at a Commonwealth country, the, the kind of our, 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 our motherland here in Canada, and that is the United Kingdom. And to, to talk about politics in the United Kingdom, I have stumbled upon one of probably the funniest podcast I've come across in a very long time. And that is the, uh, sorry, I'm going to get this fucking wrong. Pardon my French. I'm already swearing two minutes into this. <laughs> the Partly Political Broadcast Podcast. I just want to make sure if I'm saying that right. And the host of that is on the show today. And that is Tiernan Duyeb. I apologize if I just pronounced your name wrong. <laughs> and, uh, Tiernan, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thanks tons for having me. I'm, I'm enjoying your sort of, um, the, the pronunciations of everything so far it's, it's brilliant and I, i'm also just horrified that we're, we're the mother country but i suppose everyone has issues with their parents don't they so that's sort of it, it's fair yeah hey yeah. we we always have issues with a lot of things as canadians but we're so silent about <laughs> it and we're so nice about it but we don't say it openly it's not, unless it's on twitter by a hashtag <laughs> That's it, but that's what we know. That's what we know about you is that you're always nice about, which I think is the big and important difference. I I could cope with a lot more horrible politics if people were nicer about it. I think, if you know, it's this. It's sometimes I miss I miss the the bear, just the smiling with the bare face lies. That's what. <laughs> which, as Canadians, we are well versed in bold face lies. Um, <laughs> but I, but I want to thank you for doing this. Like I, I told you in our pre-interview, this is kind of a new guinea pig project for myself. So you, this is going to be completely off the cuff. I want to talk about politics around the globe. And I want to start with the United Kingdom, because let's be honest, there's kind of a big thing that's going on in UK politics right now with your prime minister, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, and that is Partygate. Okay, before we even get into what Partygate is, uh, I, I, I want to just preference this with my listeners, for those who haven't listened to any of your shows. Do you fall on the, the political spectrum somewhere? Uh, yeah, I'd say, well, I, I'm definitely left wing. Um, I, I never really know how far... I'm I'm a bit of an arsehole and I'd say I, I'm a humanist. I'm, I I would really like it if us as a species could survive and not be shit to each other. That's generally my political views. And then they they, they go into various areas <laughs> depending on the, the sector. But I just, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of, uh, I'm a comedian by nature and um, you do get, uh, as uh, they regularly complain, right-wing comedians who often believe they're being cancelled. But generally, comedians think alternative. We, we have to think outside the box and think of different opinions. And because uh, I live in a country that's been dominated by right-wing politics quite a long time, thinking alternatively tends to be uh, left-wing bias, uh I'd say. You, uh, the, the podcast, the par partial, part of partially, partly, politi partly, 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 and I should say, because I, the reason it's called that is because here, when you have a TV advert by a party, and it's probably the same in Canada, but it's called a party political broadcast. So I called mine partly political broadcast because it is less political and a mess. <laughs> so where did the idea come from? Because I think my listeners would want to know how, how a comedian like yourself sort of got involved in interest in politics and telling the political comedy that you are kind of well known for because I've like I said I've listened to some of your back catalog and I'm finding that you are quite uh knowledgeable on what's happening in politics oh god that's gonna you get that we're gonna find out that's not true over the course of this hour <laughs> but um no do you know what it is is so I do I've been doing stand-up for a frighteningly long amount of time uh well with the exception of when covid made it illegal for a while um and uh, I, uh, especially being sort of influenced by the comedians I admire and uh, when things here took a, uh, they, and there's been many political turns over here, but especially sort of in the 2010s when the Conservatives retook power, a lot of comedians I admired started doing political stuff and I started feeling quite angry about it. And I was like, basically in my brain, how do I get this out and what do I need to talk about? And it, 
just sort of went from there. I, I think I can only ever talk about things that I think. And so currently my comedy is the absolute fucking state of our country. Also, um, my daughter not going to bed on time and the fact that I drink too much coffee. So it has got some variation. But, you know, that's kind of I can only talk about things I, I care about. And, and so that's where I am, really. And, and I think the podcast is it, it, it. News has changed so rapidly here for quite some years now that I was doing material uh, at stand up gigs and it was becoming out of date while I was on stage. And I thought, well, if I start doing it in a podcast, it, it you know, it's somewhere and it stays somewhere and it stays relevant for maybe the week that people can listen to it. Um, and I think, as I mentioned to you before we started this, if I don't shout it somewhere, I'm going to be shouting it at people in the street. So I need to get it off my chest. <laughs> Here in Canada, we have a very bad apathy when it comes to politics and people not caring about what is happening in politics or who certain people are. If you polled, I would assume 90% of the people in my city right now, they would not be able to tell you who the minister of X, Y, and Z were because it just didn't care. They knew who the prime minister was, but they just don't care about the ministers or wow. even the premiers. Is that like, is, is that similar in the UK? Do people care about who cabinet ministers are and who their politicians are or is there an apathy in politics in the uk right now um it chops and changes i think that there was a massive problem with apathy but then uh issues especially issues like brexit made people very switched on to politics perhaps not necessarily knowing everything that they should about the politics but it made them very aware of it and i think that uh, for better, for worse, it's definitely for worse. But, but the fact that we've got characters like Boris Johnson as our prime minister, we've got some quite outlandish, rather ridiculous people. Um, I think that makes it. I mean, but we've got a situation at the moment where I think a lot of the Conservatives who are in the go in government, people would recognise who they are. People wouldn't recognise Labour politicians, the opposition, quite so much. And then any others, it kind of dissipates. And especially, yeah, I, I think it, it depends on where people are. Uh, and what they're doing i'd I, i'd like to but i'm i'm obsessed with politics so i watch too much but i'm very aware that a lot of people work all day come home stick the news on watch a few headlines only absorb whatever they're shouting about and then go to bed <laughs> and and so you know it, 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 it's weird that they got interested in brexit then brexit went on for so long people stopped being interested and then covid happened and then there were daily broadcasts so they got interested again it, it you know it, it changes but yeah, I worry that we're hitting a big apathy period again as people are just very fed up with everything. And are people divided in Canada? It is very left versus right. And I think you've seen that with the rise of Donald Trump in America. And because we are so close mm. to America, it has spilled over. But has it spilled over to uh, the UK? Um, because you, in, in Canada, we do have a few parties. In America, there's only two parties. But in the UK, it seems like you have 9,000 parties who get elected <laughs> as MPs with like each individual uh, country within the United Kingdom having their own sort of separate party. Is it very politically divided over in the country right now? Or is it just sort of a North American thing? No, it's very politically... Well, uh, so I, I should prefix this by saying, it, I mean... It's, it's uh, country wise, it's politically divided. We, we really only have a two party system, right? So in England, you only really have the Conservatives and Labour. Uh, there's the Liberal Democrats, the Greens, um, whatever variation of UKIP reform, whatever these kind of very far right groups are that pop Brexit up. Brexit party, all that Take fun. people's money and, and fuck off. Yeah. Um, and then in Scotland, you've got the Scottish National Party who kind of are the big major party. And it's kind of them sort of versus Conservatives versus Labour a bit. Uh, Wales are still sort of Tories, but they've got Welsh Labour, Welsh Tories. So it's a bit confusing, but we're still in a two party system. We still have a first past the post voting system, which means that new parties struggle to get through. And, and the weird thing is we are we are politically divided, but it's, it's an odd thing, right? So for example, Brexit was the big division. It was leave or remain and everyone was for or against and it's, it's your one or the other. But that was what the news said people were. That's what people online were like. But you went out and talked to people and a lot of people were like, oh, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Oh, I don't know. I suppose it'd be nice to do this or, you know, or or they were quite vehemently divided and then it happened and then they stopped caring. So I think that we're told we're divided more often than we actually are. And I especially found, I mean, again, I haven't been able to gig so much the last few years because of uh, COVID really ruined things. Um, but when you, I was gigging up and down the country, you know, I'd, I'd spend one minute watching the news at home and think oh my god i can't go to that area there just they'd fully hate me because they're this way in politics you turn up and it's a real mix of people and they all get along and they're all quite happy and they'll all laugh at anything and it's all right you know and, and i think 
the reality of the situation, we're probably not as divided as 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 we're told to be. Well, and I'm so I'm so happy that you kind of said that because uh, in Canada, if anyone who's ever listened to my show knows I despise social media with a passion. Kind of ironic because that's how I reached out to you to come on the show. <laughs> but hey, I despise it too. But I, I just can't leave. It's it's a terrible addiction. I want to leave. It's awful. Exactly, and it is it it shows that we are divided even though we're not and i'm glad that in in the united kingdom it's sort of the same because if you talk to the person on the street they are more willing to talk to you than what you might think if you saw it on social media so i'm glad that it's yeah, not well, just a canadian we've got the thing issue. in the in the UK that I, I think you've probably got, in fact, I know you've got it in Canada. It's definitely in the States, this idea of this culture war and this anti-woke and, you know, and, and you've got to be against this, you know, or this kind of sort of art or this kind of, and, and again, that's very much in the news. Uh, most people couldn't give a shit. Most people, <laughs> most people wouldn't know what you're talking about if you asked them. And I, and I really think that's, you know, if you if if you read a certain newspaper, you might feel a certain way about it. But otherwise, no one really cares. It's absolutely fabricated nonsense. But it seems like, and this is just from the things that I've read online, from uh, sort of observing uh, British politics over the last few uh, weeks, seems like there's a big common theme that everyone hates Boris Johnson right now. And that <laughs> might, that might uh, that might be because of a scandal that recently broke. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, in at the start, in uh, Tiernan might be able to explain this a little bit better. Well, explain yeah, I, I explain just... what Partygate is for those who are listening, because I think it's it is the most ironic thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Uh, it's interesting you think it's ironic. I, I just want to put in that I hated Boris Johnson long before everyone else, so I was definitely a trendsetter. <laughs> I've hated him for a really long amount of time now. Um, also, uh, I should say that not everyone does hate him, and he still has a frightening amount of support. But Seriously? Partygate is... Yeah. Oh, man, we'll get to that. But <laughs> Partygate is... Um, it was it was revealed that there have been and i can't even remember how many now but the at number 10 downing street which is where the for those who don't know it's where the prime minister is based um there were a number of parties during the lockdown period when we were all in massive restrictions that meant we couldn't even see family or friends or if you were outdoors you're going to be in a group six whatever the variation we went through various weird variations that didn't make sense <laughs> at times you're only allowed out for an hour to exercise whatever and at the same time, there were a number of parties, including a hundred people garden party where staff were sent to fill a fridge full of booze from the uh, local co-op shop. And then there was, uh, it just came out this week, the Boris Johnson had a birthday party in his office where there was cake and there was booze. And uh, one of the uh, one of one of the chancellor said, um, oh, no, he wasn't there on purpose. He was unintentionally present for cake. And, and we're getting a lot of weird phrases. Another MP said Boris Johnson didn't know about it. He was ambushed by cake. That's been the phrase of the week being ambushed which i'd love to be ambushed by cake i dream of that situation in my life um but but i mean there it started with one party which i think was in may 2020 and i'm, I'm going to be vague on this because there's literally been every other day a new party revelation and i think it says a lot about our politics that it makes sense to me now that our government has been absolutely drunk off their face for two years a lot of their decisions seem quite clear like oh right oh that no wonder they did that because they were wasted um but the thing is it's coming out and people are obviously livid because they they weren't able to see dying relatives they weren't able to say goodbye to people they lost during, you know people have had a horrible time people being incredibly lonely mental health you know i mean i don't need to tell you you've had the same in canada we've had the same all over the world people hated it and at the same time the very government who are making the decisions were not following any of the restrictions or you know uh, and and the boris johnson's excuses have been oh nobody told me the party wasn't okay it's like well you made the rules you you should have known it wasn't okay and, these, and they've just been quite pathetic um but well, the a... thing that i found interesting because i remember him saying this a few times was i don't remember if i was there and i have to yes. wait for the report to tell me if i was there or not i was like yes well uh, uh, what <laughs> There was a particularly weird one where it happened on the night before the, the Queen, uh, the Queen was the next day had to go to the funeral of her husband. She had to go by herself. Um, I think actually, let's be fair, she made the choice of going by. She was allowed exemptions, but she said, I'll be like the rest of the public and go by. I attend this by myself. And she had to sit. There's a very sad picture of her sitting in a church by herself, all in black, mourning her husband who just died. And uh, at the night before, 
conservatives were having a party and then they apologized to the queen but they denied the party and wouldn't say what they apologized for <laughs> which is the weirdest oh we're sorry what for uh you know <laughs> stuff we're, some, we're, stuff we're, we're taking a page out of the canadian book we're just apologizing yeah. <laughs> for everything <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's been weird. And yeah, Boris Johnson has denied being at the party and then sort of admitted if he had been at it, it would have been wrong, but he can't confirm he was there until the report comes out. And we're speaking on the day the report was meant to come out, but it's been delayed and the police weren't going to investigate it. But now they're saying they will, but that might delay the report. For, it's, it's a massive mess and everyone's stalling for time. And while they're stalling for time, people are getting bored and starting to like Boris Johnson again, simply out of boredom. Uh, the Conservative MPs who were adamantly against him and now thinking well situation in ukraine might kick off and we might need to back him for that and we don't want a general election now because we're not very popular and we might need to back him so maybe it's safer to keep him on and i mean i just got this horrible feeling we're going to be stuck with this awful lying man for even longer really so before before we came when you sent me that message that your daughter was still awake and you were just trying to put her down for those <laughs> anyone yeah. we started a little bit late i i did a little bit of a well, quick update just in case there was something new that came out of uh, british politics in the last like 24 hours since I last left a check. And it seems like Tory MPs are now trying to throw mud across the aisle at Keir Starmer because I just read a report from the Daily Mail. And if I, I don't know if the Daily Mail is a left leaning paper or right leaning paper, but <laughs> very right. So okay. Right. So they it supported it, the Nazis before World War II and they've never really changed. Okay. Um, maybe I shouldn't mention <laughs> them. <but laughs> it, it was revealed that Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, had actually also had a party as well. So conservative MPs are trying to sort of bash him to take distraction away from Boris Johnson. Yeah, well, it turns out that Keir Starmer, who I have to, I'm not a particular fan of at all, but he he had one beer uh, after they'd had this like work. They were all they were all still working, and in the middle of work, they had beer and food, which you might say isn't right. But the Conservatives had like a hundred people party. <laughs> they're the ones but, you know, making the decisions on the yeah, lockdown. So it, it's still a bit i mean but the other thing is that we you know what this is a culmination of two well two years of boris johnson's prime minister lying but he's lied throughout his whole career he lost his job as a journalist for the telegraph some years ago because of lying he was fired um he lied throughout his being london mayor there were various things he promised that didn't happen or didn't go ahead as planned and then all sorts of dodgy things including a somebody he had an affair with that gained a whole load of investment money quite suspiciously and then in government they prorogued parliament to push brexit laws through and then it turned out that was unlawful and he'd lied to the queen and so we've just had lies and lies and lies and lies and lies and it has been endless and it, it's it, there was sort of you know it's it's awful to find these things out and, and people feel very cheated but there is a bit of me going yes good finally point them out right point, because we've all been aware of that he, this is the sort of person he is and if if anyone's surprised about it it's like why well, you haven't paid the slightest bit of attention to any of his career or his life so you you mentioned uh, briefly a few minutes ago that he has support. He still has people who like him. Is it because Boris Johnson is Boris Johnson or is it because the alternative option, the PM in waiting, as you just said yourself, Keir Starmer, you don't really like him or Sir Keir, St uh, Keir Starmer, if you want to be correct with his title here, but... <laughs> is isn't well liked and he isn't well known so we'd rather go with the devil we know than the devil we don't i think it's a bit of that i, th I think that the conservatives in this country always have about 40 percent um backing right so just there's always 40 percent of, of the country that will always back it doesn't matter who the opposition is what's going on they will back the conservatives and that's partly because they know that means their investments are safe and their homes are safe and their wealth in the cayman islands and the tax they're avoiding is safe and if they keep voting in these people things just stay as they are in the countryside and that's how they'll always be and we've had for many years what we call safe seats which are where it doesn't matter the conservatives can put a potato in there with a face drawn on it and it still get voted voted in because it's a conservative seat and <clears throat> i think what's happened now is that we've got a, a labor are uh, well they've been sort of pitching themselves a different labor to the one led by jeremy corbyn uh but they they i mean there's a they haven't re really stood for anything and and a lot of their policies are very similar to conservative policy a conservative mp last week 
swapped from Conservatives to Labour and they accepted him in. And that for me, some people are like, brilliant. Yeah, they're showing Boris Johnson. I was like, no, this means the parties are the same. <laughs> this isn't a good thing for our democracy. If you can just switch between the two with your policies, it's not really an opposition. Um, but I think Labour, my, my view is that they don't really... They, they don't really come across as standing for anything or doing anything. And right now they seem to be winning support. They're higher in the polls than Conservatives considerably. But but that's only because Conservatives are doing badly. So they're never doing well for themselves unless the other side is just bombing. They're, they're riding off the other's failures, basically. So, but does, yeah. Does, because in Canada, in Canada, we have the kind of the running joke that we don't elect governments, we defeat governments, right? We didn't elect Justin Trudeau, we defeated Stephen Harper, prime minister. We didn't elect Stephen Harper, we defeated Paul Martin, the liberal MP before him, PM before him. In, uh, in Britain, is that similar? Because when David Cameron came to office in 2010, defeating uh, uh, Gordon Brown, was it we just don't like Gordon Brown and we actually like David Cameron? Or is it actually the support for the Conservatives was on the rise and because they had better policies? I think there's there's a bit of when David Cameron came in, it, Labour had been in power since 1997, and therefore it was a bit of a change. But which I mean, I, you know, it's just weird. Oh, we'll just we'll just try the other one, see what happens. But but there's but there was also a lot of it's been big stories. So you've had um, that was just after the global financial crash. We had an election in 2010. Global global financial crash happened in 2008. They then watched things start to go horribly wrong, and Gordon Brown put in measures that I'm not even going to pretend to understand, but that helped us. <laughs> a bit but there was this big narrative going that labor caused the crash i don't know how they caused the global financial like it's pretty pre in a way i was like wow that's pretty impressive you crash the globe you're almost super powerful we should you know, we should always praise it look at them they've ruined everything it, that was iceland anyway it wasn't us um so you know but that was a global financial crash that caused that and then you had uh david cameron he resigned um, because he lost the because the Brexit vote went for leave and he was sort of backing Remain. He said it was only right if he resigned. And then Theresa May took over and she did the she best felt, dance I've ever seen of a politician <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh my God. The incredible thing is the main joke about her was she was sort of known as the Maybot, right? Or the Maybot 1000 because she was like a robot and, and really emotionless. And then her dance was like a robot dance, but like a robot would do a robot. It was. It was her. Well, it was really horrific. I mean, I was going to say it was a horrific point in politics, but we've had those endlessly now for years. Um, so Theresa May sort of felt she had to have an election to kind of keep, you know, because she was losing support, and she didn't. I mean, she she won, but like barely. Like Labour really smashed the amount of seats that they had. They got more votes than they'd ever had before, and they did really well. She kind of hold on to it especially she had the brexit promise then but then when boris johnson took over he had a he had the 2019 election and he i mean you know i think a lot of people would probably argue with this but i think the majority of the reason he got in is because of brexit he was like let he'll get get brexit done and two years later it's, it's still not done but it's you know he's that there's still so i mean <laughs> we've got the northern ireland issue um, that they're talking about redoing and then there's still various trade deals that haven't quite come through and are you know being talked about being extended it's it's going to go on for the rest of our lives i think so, so you left without leaving basically yeah well, it was a three word slogan <laughs> and people thought that sounded great and uh you know get brexit done brilliant that's what we just want it done we want it over with they don't even care what it was anymore they just heard about it endlessly there were lots of vox pots where people went oh i just want it done now so i voted for him and 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 that was what it was very smart um you know he had a special advisor called dominic cummings at the time who uh, there's been i think there's a film about with benedict cumberbatch and you know uh, as him which is uh, i mean jesus yeah if you see pictures of cummings and i don't know how they got to that anyway but it was really clever three word slogans a bit like trump had make america great again we had get brexit done and build back better we've had all these three word slogans that have just kind of hypnotize people into doing it and uh yeah so that that's been it's it's always we, we always have a big people have got a very goldfish memory and they go what's the last thing that happened that was terrible we'll ignore the previous years of you know our current conservative government kept saying you know vote for change vote for us it's like but you've been in since 2010 and how, how does <laughs> how's no one realized this We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show with a quick visit to patreon.com 
and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Um, traditionally in the British politics, uh, from an observer, an outside observer from Canada, you, you seem to elect governments for X period of time. So 10, 15 years, I'm just thinking of Thatcher through the eighties, uh, then a major, and then you got Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, 97 to 2010, you got 10 years. Could this be the end of the conservative reign after this next election? Because you are seeing the, uh, labor lead in the polls or, Let's be honest, there's always that one party that has the football and finds a way to fucking fumble it right at the t- uh, yeah. 10 yard ten yard line. So football reference yeah. as in American football, not, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get that, it's all right. I mean, it's sort of, it almost works for both. Um, yeah, but Labour are really good at self-sabotaging. They're really good at tearing themselves apart, uh, which is what they've done consistently for years now. Um, but But also it's more than that in that we... Even if Boris Johnson goes and we get a new leader, we don't have to have an election. There doesn't have to be an election until 2024, right? So they could choose to have one. They could say, well, I've got, we've got a new leader. I've, I'd like to pretend they've got some morality and think, well, it'd be, you know, we should have a new election because a new leader, but they, they probably won't. So by 2024, that gives two years for everyone to forget about what's happened and something else to have happened that, that you know, I, I mean, it's interesting. I think so many, so many people have had, uh increasingly worse lives in the last 10 years um you know not just because of the pandemic there are a whole load of people that weren't supported during the pandemic in this country that have had horrific time but then we've got all the people that are in high-rise flats that have had flammable cladding that hasn't been dealt with we've got more children in poverty than we've ever had before more food bank use the property market's impossible young people a whole generation of young people pretty much everyone under 40 is unable to buy a house unless they've got masses of inheritors and and a lot of people are feeling very betrayed, very worried about our health service. You know, I, I could go, I could quite literally list for hours all the things that are falling apart. And it's and it's quite worrying, um, you know, and, and I think we've also, which people don't care about as much, but we've just had this uh, policing bill, which for, for listeners, we've got the House of Commons, which are our MPs and our Prime Ministers, and we have the House of Lords who are unelected peers which didn't come up during brexit was all about getting rid of unelected <laughs> peers but we were fine with the house of lords and the royals it was very confusing and um the house of lords who normally are uh, criticized because they're unelected and anyone shoved in there but they've blocked this policing bill which is brilliant because the policing bill is going to ban all protests if they can be deemed annoying and the term annoying is incredibly vague in that if one person goes it's a bit noisy banned <laughs> and you can be arrested for up to 10 years for taking part so it's a complete sort of um opposition to democracy if you can't have protests you we aren't a democracy anymore um and the government have been rushing this through and labor have sort of not been turning up or occasionally opposing it and now the lords have blocked it and hopefully something happened but we've got these quite draconian bills coming through we've got that and um the high court has just blocked the nationality and borders bill which basically can have anyone with dual citizenship have their british citizenship taken off them without any case or without any warning and the high the um high court has just blocked that today thankfully but it still might get pushed through so these are these are quite scary policies so and all of this is going on oh sorry no, I'm, I'm going to ask this, a very stupid question here. What the fuck's going on? What the fuck's going on with your government if these are the bills that are they're putting forward? Is is this what the majority of people want, or is this just what the conservatives think they want? It's I I find it difficult to say because I think our government are majority populist, um, and I think there's definitely been some interesting moments where they've back down once people have realized what they're up to which i would say uh is maybe makes them a bit lower than fascist because i'd have thought a fascist government wouldn't care and would push through anyway and these guys are so cowardly that when we had an mp who was doing two jobs at the same time and lobbying and uh was being investigated and the mp said rather than him be investigated why don't we change the investigation procedure which is so it's very corrupt right now and that caused an outrage but it caused an outrage because it was in the press and the press focused on it and people got upset and then it, it turned around this mp had to resign and but if people aren't focused on it people don't know about the policing bill people don't know about the borders bill i think they would be living if they did um you'd hope they would be but it's very scary there's some really 
very fascistic things coming through. Um, and at the same time, the government seemed largely just concerned with their own money and their own future and and what what they can get out of it i think and that, that was the same with brexit a lot of them benefited from brexit a lot of them like jacob reese mogg who's sort of like a victorian villain um he's like a sort of evil where's wally of a man i feel like and, he should uh, be twisting his like if he had a mustache yeah. he'd be should twisting it all, all time it, he doesn't have a mustache which i think is weird it's like the one thing he really he needs a top hat and a mustache to to finish the child catcher image and um but he's got he's got investments in sort of Ireland, I think, that were boosted massively. So there's a lot of really corrupt things are happening. People were given PPE contracts because they just knew someone in government, even though they couldn't supply them. And it's it's really terrifying. Um, those things are really terrifying, and I try not to be just constantly worried about them. But at the same time, they also what what i think stops me being scared is that the people doing it are so stupid these mbs are so stupid that they just for example thought that information about them having parties wouldn't come out and they you know they're doing these things thinking that no one will find out about them and they absolutely do because they're not good at covering their own tracks and i think that's what gives me a little bit of hope um but to go back to your earlier question i'm sorry we've gone off on a tangent here well, i love it got, i love it that's yeah. the great thing about the show we just don't give two shits <laughs> It's just, there's so much to fit this. I swear it's a new story every day here. Um, but the next election won't be till 2024. So, you know, my hope is that we get rid of the, we get rid of this lot and, and we have a change, even though, as I said, I'm not a really a fan of Labour and I worry what they would do too, but I think they'd be better. Um, but by 2024, everyone could have forgotten all this. Various bills could have already been forced through and no one care. You know, I, I don't know where we're going to be. Um, so who, who knows is the, the it's, answer, unfortunately. Um, we are recording this on Wednesday, as mm -hmm. the Wednesday the 26th. I just want to make sure if I can do my basic math here correctly. Yes, 26th. Um, that, not basic math, but read my calendar correctly. Um, January 27th, uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced that, hey, COVID is kind of over with and we're going to drop all the restrictions and everyone's going to basically have to live to learn with this numbers of covid are high how is this being taken in uh the uk are people upset that restrictions are being sort of turfed to the side or is this kind of a hail mary pass to say don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain and don't pay attention to the report that we're about to release and go about and live your life because that's how i looked at it yeah it is i mean <laughs> It's very much that he he very much did that because he's being he's unpopular and he thought if I drop all the restrictions it will make me popular again. Um, but again, that thing that we were talking about earlier, if you look at social media, you'd think fifty percent of this country is anti-vaxxers and angry. Ninety-five percent of the adult population have had their vaccines now in in the UK, which is extremely high. We're like really high up in people that have taken their vaccines. Um, I think during the lockdowns um the figures were something i'm going to throw this out and someone can google it and tell me i'm completely wrong but i think it was something like 90 to 92 percent of all people followed all the restrictions right which is a lot and the, and the ones that weren't may have been very minor you know it may have been very minor sort of uh, breaking of them uh, and and the other ones that weren't were all in number 10 downing street having parties <laughs> probably um so it's quite odd i think there's the it's that thing of again all the media now has all the media i sound like uh, an absolute tinfoil hat person don't I? but it, it really is a it's a single voice in a lot of our media you really do have that issue now and um, that it's not really an independent media it hasn't been for a long a lot of it's owned by rupert murdoch and a, a lot of it's you know uh paul dacron's the male he's very right wing is it but a lot of the media have been reporting omicron is mild it's mild it's like a cold it's like a flu and they're not reporting the stats every day like they used to you have to look for them online um they're not reporting reinfections they're just import reporting infections so everyone thinks it's lower than it is we're still having hundreds of deaths a day people who are vulnerable people with uh, disabilities are terrified because they're they're very vulnerable to this and um but most people are angry that the nhs our health service has a big waiting list and it needs to get a move on uh, we're being told that everyone has to go back to the office but that's because a lot of very rich people own all the offices and they're not getting their rent and they're worried about losing it um so it's very confusing i mean i i find i'm, I'm going to give you just a uh, personal anecdote you know uh, evidence because i can't really tell you about the rest of the country because i haven't gone anywhere because of covid um and you haven't spoken area, to i'm assuming every single uh, united exactly. president no i mean hey i'd try i'd try but um 
but yeah, I mean, everyone still in my area. Everyone still wears masks in all the shops. I mean, I'm in I'm in North London, so it's probably more sort of uh, you know lefty liberal. Uh, it, that's a lie. People are more mixed than the, the, the <laughs> thing. But it's um you know everyone's still wearing masks in all the shops. There's no anger about it. There's people. Most people are wearing it on the transport system. You know, I think I think people are going to be more cautious than the government are, and they have been the whole way. Anyway, the government have constantly made weird choices we had a whole campaign in the midst of it called eat out to help out which is go to a restaurant and you get 10 pounds off to help out and it's like there's like a hundred thousand cases a day people didn't go <laughs> it was like what, is, what are you talking about um go yeah. get your go get your food and then you get ten dollars off plus covid at the same time all in the same trip. yeah well also the eat out bit just sounded like a euphemism it, it was a regular joke um <laughs> I get it. it. I yeah. get that reference. Um, my, my old terms is, well, yeah, fellatio because the economy's low, I think, was it? Um, <laughs> give head because there's 150,000 people dead. That's a bit grim. But, you know, there were alternatives they could have used. That was a... We, uh, I'm just cautious of time here and we're almost at the sure. hour mark here and I just want to make Sorry, sure... Sorry, I've we... talked at you, but I just, I should just tell listeners, things here are fucked, basically. <laughs> that's what it is. There's that, a lot to that, talk that's about. That's the title of the episode. <laughs> things here are fucked. <laughs> Um, I, I want to know just the future. The future of politics in uh, the United Kingdom looks very murky because uh, until we see this report, which as of airing this, we have not. It was supposed to come out, but it hasn't. The I just want the Sue Gray report, uh, which uh, talks about Partygate. Until we know the state of the 1922 committee about if they're going to get that 15% of the MPs to vote against Boris Johnson's leadership, are you guys in a perpetual state of unknown until everything fucking decide until the Conservative Party decides to figure out what the hell they're doing? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, this is the other worrying thing is it's up to the concern. It's not up to the people who the next leader is and when this leader goes. It's up to a very small percentage of the Conservative Party. And even then, the vote on the new leader will be up to the Conservative Party. It'll probably be televised, even though we don't have a say. That's what happened last time. We had televised leader debates. Um, for people that we couldn't vote for which is absolutely bizarre so we're, we're constantly uncertain um and i think we have been for years again everything since brexit has been pretty uncertain over here um but but there's i you know i, I try and be slightly optimistic i think the one thing that that the yeah i was slightly optimistic the one thing that was very interesting about covid here and uh, again i believe this is a global thing rather than a uk thing i'm not going to try and take credit for it but there was a lot of mutual aid groups over here there were a lot of people that supported their community formed things online said mutual aid these people are in trouble how can we get together and kind of sort it out and that's kind of continued i, I think there's been a bit of burnout and a bit of exhaustion. People have had to return to their lives. But I think there's uh, where people are focused on politics. It's now back to com there's more interesting community level than there was before. And I kind of hope that's, a good, you know, I, I kind of hope that continues and that's a good thing. And, and people look at that and also see these problems are the government's fault ultimately. And this is these community level things. Um, so, But I, I don't know. It's constantly uncertain. I, I yeah, I keep having to take little breaks from watching the news. <clears throat> Just uh, for my own sanity, I think. Uh, I just want to kind of follow up on the potential resignation if he decides to go or if the party decides to turf him. Potential replacement of Boris Johnson. Is there depth in the benches of the Conservative Party where there might be someone who could actually, you know, know what they're doing and actually yeah. kind of be the adult in the room? No, no, absolutely no. No, the, the, the people that are currently being pitched, we've either got the Chancellor um, Rishi Sunak who was um i mean more interested in in money than than saving lives during the pandemic he was absolutely just about making people go to work and getting rid of restrictions as quickly as possible um he's incredibly ruthless he's also a multi-millionaire married to a billionaire um and has perfect houses perfect opportunity to be prime minister wants to then. privatize our health care yeah he's he's a really um, but he's being pitched as the sensible one. And uh, for a long time, his nickname was Dishy Rishi because various newspapers told us he was attractive. Um, so he's he's one of the contenders. The other one is a woman called Liz Truss, who is, uh, you know, I, I tr I'm probably too harsh on my podcast, but I genuinely think her head is entirely air. And I think she's the sort of person that would repeatedly walk into like a closed glass door um several times before realizing it wasn't open she just appears she's 
her main things that she's done is she's got post Brexit deals that are considerably worse than any deal we had before Brexit and then claimed their victories. So we've just done a big deal with Australia where we've got absolutely nothing out of it. And Australia will now be able to provide all our lamb and beef and completely ruin our farming industry. Um, uh, we might get Tim Tam biscuits apparently, but that that's it. And, you know, she's done a really terrible job, and mainly she seems to go around the world and take selfies of herself. Um, oh, we have a prime minister she... who does that, so don't worry. We have a prime minister who goes around <laughs> the world and takes photos. So. Oh wow! So maybe she is. Maybe she should be the next one. Then maybe that's the <laughs> the global trend. Um, but yeah, it's and and weirdly, our former health secretary who had to who was uh, did a lot of very dodgy PP contracts to friends. He he had to resign because he had an affair that was caught on CCTV um, in the midst of the pandemic when you weren't meant to be seeing anyone and he was cheating on his wife. He had to resign, but now he seems to be doing lots of publicity stunts to pitch for leadership, as though everyone might just forget. So it's we're going to be given an idiot. It just depends on what level of idiot. And I don't... Yeah, I you know I don't think it will be a worse idiot. It might be an idiot that brushes their hair, which would make them slightly better than Boris Johnson. I think um, it's very hard to say. Um, for my last sort of segment here, I want, I want I'm going to pitch you a few names, and I want your honest, which you you totally haven't given your honest opinion in the last hour of talking so far. <laughs> but I, I want from a, from a British perspective, because as Canadians or Americans, we we see your politicians and we kind of hear who they are and kind of make our own assumption. But from your perspective as a British man, as a British comedian, I want to know your thoughts on certain politicians, if you don't mind me asking. All British mm -hmm. politicians, okay? Okay. Yeah, and I'm going to sure. start with the big one, because this is the biggest one I think everyone's want, wanting to know. Nigel Farage. What the hell? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Is that literally all you have to say? Yeah, he's just such a fucking chancer. I, we call him a chancer or a grifter. He is 100% wherever he thinks the money is going to be. Um, he's very good. I, I give you a really big example of, of Nigel Farage and who he is as a human being. He has spent a long time standing on beaches in our country, pointing at <laughs> asylum seekers coming in on dinghies and claiming that they're somehow destroying the country, even though they normally end up in a detention centre for three to four years and are given a wage much lower than the minimal wage and aren't allowed to get a job or any legal defence or any health care. Somehow they're taking over the country. I don't really know. Again, if they're that powerful, maybe we should be scared if they can do that. But he, he stands on the beach and points at them and he's been saying we need to have an immigration system like Australia. And then he's gone to Australia and defended Novak Djokovic, complaining that their immigration system was horrific and why won't they let in a foreign immigrant just because he doesn't want to be vaccinated. Well... Which is it? And he, he absolutely has no morals. He's got no conviction. Um, he will just turn up wherever he thinks there is money. He, he's he's very much a sort of, uh, I mean, less performative Alex Jones kind of figure in, in the UK, I'd say. Um, but dresses like Toad from um, Wind in the Willows. Um, Nicholas Sturgeon. Nicholas Sturgeon is an interesting one because um, in England, a lot of people look at her as being incredibly sensible because she can talk in proper sentences unlike our prime minister and seems to actually follow the rules she makes and basically she's a proper politician the the issue is um and i say it's an issue i i believe in independent scotland mainly because i think why not get the fuck away from us and enjoy your lives um but there are issues about an independent scotland i'm not i won't get into that hit that's very complicated and she is very pro-independence and no qualms about that and there are issues with the SNP and, and what they're doing with education and healthcare in Scotland and that they're not that they I think compared to our government seem very left wing but in reality they're more kind of centre centre right and are pushing through some things people are worried about but as a human being oh my god she talks properly and it's brilliant <laughs> Someone who can put a sentence together or two in the exact same paragraph Our and go, what? It's really low, Chris. It's really, <laughs> really low right now. And, you know, that's really, yeah, that's the thing. If we get a new conservative leader that just talks properly, we might all go, oh, thank God for that and, and forget about it. Um, I, I'll leave it at that. Um, uh, I guess the last question for you is this. How can people listen to your show? How can people reach out? Because I follow you and you're you're quite a funny guy and I've enjoyed the last hour of talking. So how can oh, people thanks, learn Chris. more about yourself? 
Well, if they haven't been put off by our chat, um, it's uh, the, the podcast is called Partly Political Broadcast. Um, it's yeah, it's on all the podcasts. I don't wherever you get as people say it, wherever you get your podcast from, it's probably one of those you know Apple, Spotify, all those big places owned by people that go to space all the time. Um, and uh, but I do loads of shit, um, and you just find me Tier and Dieb on Twitter, on Facebook, on if you Google, if you can spell my name, which is a feat in itself, I am the only one on google so it's worth a go um for anyone who's listened to the show or seen the show before you know what i'm about to say Sh- links to tiernan's uh facebook page twitter uh spotify apple podcast all that stuff his website in the show notes so scroll down follow him i highly recommend it listen to his uh, podcast as well partly political podcast or partly political broadcast podcast because the, it, on twitter it says broadcast so i gotta make sure i say broadcast <laughs> so people aren't looking for a certain podcast that doesn't exist um <laughs> Tiernan, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks, Taz. That was a joy. I hope uh, I hope I haven't just shouted at you for an hour. <laughs> As a Canadian, I apologize for anything I've just said. <laughs> um, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, have yourself an excellent day. Have an, ex- have an excellent weekend. And remember, guys, just keep talking. <laughs>